In the name of the one God, our rock and our salvation. Amen. There's a fire engine going by, just like if we were at church. Nothing can throw someone into crisis of identity like a crisis in their life. Sudden shifts of the ground on which we stand can throw us off balance and demand new things from us we didn't even know we had to give. Many of us share or have before and after stories. We remember who we were before the diagnosis and who we became after the remission, before we found sobriety and after we hit rock bottom, before we had kids, lost our parents, lost our job, and who we were after. Usually the events that pre precipitate a shift in identity are sudden and they are severe. The road to recovery afterwards to wholeness and healing takes longer than the event itself. In this time of pandemic, it feels a bit more like crisis creep than a sudden jolt or shift of the earth. Over the past six plus months, the enormity of the challenge has continued to unfold before our eyes. We have adapted a bit at a time, accommodating challenge after challenge, the demands on our bodies and minds and hearts increasing incrementally so that we don't even notice it until we do. Until we look around and to quote the talking heads, we ask ourselves, how did I get here? And maybe even, my God, what have I done? For this is not our beautiful life. I returned last week from time away on vacation with my family. The three of us are all in vocations that prioritize the academic calendar. And so we always look forward to all three of us being unplugged at the same time. This year, it could not have come at a better time. Just before we left, I could feel that my spirit was spending more and more time wondering how did I get here? I could hear myself actually saying things like, they didn't teach us this in seminary, and secretly longing for things to just go back to normal. But that desire for normal was becoming increasingly dissonant and uncomfortable for me as the other pandemic of white supremacy was moving me to ask just what normal was and whether that was something for which any of us wanted to be longing, never mind working actively to bring about. I was feeling so tossed about by one pandemic that was asking me to be someone I wasn't sure I wanted to be and another that was calling me to be better than who I had been, to become more of who it is I wanted to be who God needed me to be in this moment. The worst part for me, anyway, was that none of this was intentional. Each day I was simply waking up wondering what unknown was waiting for me that day. How were the rules going to change that day and ask me to shift and spin and react without any time for discernment, for prayer, for listening to that still small voice of God in my life. That's why Sabbath is so incredibly important. And not just once a year, but every seven days, at least, as scripture tells us. One day, or a half a day, or an hour to set aside to reboot and reconnect with God and who it is God is calling us to be. Nothing can throw us into a crisis of identity like a crisis in our lives. That is not a modern phenomenon. 
Our readings today meet us in this time of uncertainty as if to call to us from generations past and remind us that the questions we are all asking right now are questions that have been asked for millennia. And for those of us who ask those questions of their God, the answer has always been the same. Remember who you are and remember whose you are. Isaiah, writing to a community struggling to understand who they were in the midst of exile, says, Look to the rock from which you were hewn. Look to the quarry from which you were dug. Isaiah urges those in exile not to get their sense of identity from the evidence of their current circumstances. Who they are is not merely the sum of who they are finding themselves needing to be in that moment. They are, Isaiah knows, so much more. They are made of the very stuff of God. They are children of the covenant, pieces of rock from the quarry of the very heart of God. Their exile does not define them. Quite the opposite, in fact. It is who they are that can define how it is they will come through this time of crisis in exile. Paul offers the same wisdom from his jail cell in Rome. His readers are scared and they're confused and they are feeling lost. Do not be conformed to this world, Paul writes, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Paul reminds them and us that they are so much more than the challenges they are facing. Who they are as children of God and the body of Christ will allow them to meet those challenges and come through them transformed. Jesus knows that identities can shift, particularly when that identity is leading you to the cross. Who do people say that I am, Jesus asks. And Peter, the same one who will deny knowing him at all, answers, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus has got to be wondering how that might shift when things start to go south. As if reaching back to Isaiah, Jesus reminds Peter of who he is and who he has always been. Peter, translated, means rock. So Jesus is saying, you are rock. And this rock will be the foundation of all the beloved community gathered in God's name. The hard days ahead will not define you. God will, for God already has. You are rock. Remember the rock from which you were hewn and the quarry from which you were dug, for nothing can change that ever. Returning from our vacation, I was a little disappointed that the pandemic hadn't ended while I was away, and that racial disparity hadn't ceased. Not only that, but fires were now raging and electricity was uncertain in California, and it was hurricane season. And if that weren't enough, it was the final three months of a presidential election season which, in times less strenuous and less divisive, is still my least favorite season there is. And yet, as I re-entered life post-Sabbath time, I was struck anew by the truth of Isaiah's and Paul's and Jesus' words for us in this time, in this place. I could see with fresh eyes that though things have changed dramatically for us, as a church over the past six months, the essence of who we are, the rock from which we were hewn, that has remained as steadfast as ever. In fact, as the landscape has shifted, what has been removed has only revealed in greater clarity the essence of who it is we are called to be. 
like an delicate archaeologist's brush or the harsh wind of the desert. The treasure has been revealed as the dust has been swept away. How we are all caring for each other in this time, that comes from the rock from which we were hewn. The creativity we have seen and how we are continuing to connect and worship comes from the quarry from which we have been dug. That we have not shrunk in fear, but continued and expanded our work in anti-racism, social justice, ministry outside the parish, be safe and more. That's all a testament to our commitment to being transformed by the renewing of our minds not being conformed to this world in which we find ourselves. And as much as this is true for the community of St. Paul's, it can be true for each one of us. It is true for each one of us in this time in which we live. No matter how it is you are being asked to meet the incredible demands of this time, as a teacher or a student, a parent, someone at risk, an organizer, a politician, an artist, a server, no matter what unexpected demands are waiting for you tomorrow, there is one thing of which you can be assured. There is one identity you claim that cannot change. Above all else, above job title or vocation, above political party or denominational affinity, above all else and before all else, you are a beloved child of God and you are a member of the body of Christ. Remember the rock from which you were hewn. Remember the quarry from which you were dug. Be transformed not by the demands placed on you or the challenges facing you, but by the renewing of your minds, bathed in the transformative love of the God who made you. When the ground below you shifts and the demands in front of you are endless, when you wake and wonder to yourself, how did I get here? Remind yourself that God dug you out of the quarry of creation. God carved you from the rock of God's love and placed you here, a beloved member of the body of Christ, because we need you here and because you belong here. Remember that God, out of God's abundant grace, has put everything in you you need to be who it is God needs you to be today. Who is it that God says that you are? You are a rock. And on you, God will build the beloved community God has made us to be, if given the chance. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are same as it ever was. Amen.